My, my, my. The goodness of God. Has the Lord been good to anybody here? Has the Lord been good to anybody here in this house? My, how many times has the Lord been good? Oh, God of glory. My, my. What a blessed people. What a blessed people we are. I've asked our bishop to bring the word to us uh, this morning. I'm always excited uh, when, uh, uh, when he preaches. And looking forward to hearing from the man of God today. Why don't you put your hands together as we welcome our bishop to the platform. I was thinking about that song all my life. You've been faithful. All your life, he's been faithful. Amen. God has never let anybody in this room down. There's never been a problem that's ever been brought to his feet. That he looked at and said, you'll have to take that someplace else. I can't do nothing about it. Amen. All my life, he's been faithful. All my life, he's been so, so good to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Pastor, for... Allowing me to preach this morning. Our first lady, we love this couple. Amen. They're so good to Sister Littlefield and myself. And I always have been. Amen. Thank you all for allowing us to stay here in, in the church. Amen. There's a lot of uh, pastors who don't want the old bird around no more. They want him to get on down the road and get out of their way. But they make us feel welcome. You make us feel welcome. And, and we like to say we're thankful for everybody that's here this morning. Amen. I look up on this congregation this, this morning not as just saints of the Lord, but as friends. Amen. Amen. I was told when I first got into church, and maybe before I was even called to preach, I don't remember, but I remember a pastor telling me, he said, a preacher's always got to stay a little bit above his congregation. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. You're my friends. Right. Amen. I'm not better than you. You're not better than me. I'm not in this thing alone. We're in this thing together. Amen. Amen. And our prime goal is to make it to heaven. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Got your Bibles. Turn with me uh, this morning to... Acts chapter 27, be reading verses 7, uh, excuse me, 13 through 20. I'd like to say this morning that I want to dedicate this message this morning to those of you that don't have the Holy Ghost. 
There may be some here this morning that said, Brother Little Phil, I've, I've had a, a good experience with God. I appreciate that. You're a better person for it. But just a good experience with God is not enough. In Acts, the second chapter, it says that after Peter got on delivering his message, they said, Amen and brethren, what shall we do? What do we got to do to be saved? Peter said, I'm just going to wrap it up like this. You got to repent. You got to be baptized in the name of Jesus. And you got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So I dedicate this message this morning to you because the devil's going to be fighting you. I dedicate this message this morning to the saints of God that may be going through uh, a lot of problems, a lot of trials. I hope some way I can encourage you. If you're standing here this morning without the Holy Ghost, though you had a, a walk with God, an experience with God, though God has blessed you beyond measure, you hadn't got the fullness of God until you're baptized in Jesus' name, repent of your sins, and been filled with the Holy Ghost, with evidence of speaking in other tongues. Amen. Chapter 27 of Acts, begin reads verse 13. And when the south winds blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing then they sailed close to Crete. But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Urochlodon. This is a tempestuous wind. Actually, in East Texas language, this was a hurricane. Amen. Or a typhoon. One or the other. A very severe storm. And when the ship was caught, it could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which is called Claudia, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, straight sail, and so were driven. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. And the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. This is writing by the Apostle Paul. Wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. He saw the dead raised to life and a lot of other miracles, but he recorded in verse 20. And when neither sun nor stars in many days did appear, and no small tempest laid on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. The great apostle Paul said, I just almost gave up. I won't try to preach to you for a little while this morning, but don't ever give up. Pastor, would you ask the Lord to bless this? said amen. amen you may be seated thank you for standing don't ever give up
The devil's going to see to it. That contrary winds are going to blow your way. If you're trying to live for God, you, you've been uh, repented of your sins, been baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and you're trying to live for God and uh, with all your heart, the devil's going to bring contrary winds against you. Right. Amen. If you're sitting here this morning, you don't have the Holy Ghost. And like I said, you may have had a great experience with God, and God may have come down and, and blessed you. But you'll not be ever be satisfied till you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So the devil's going to bring contrary winds against you. Amen. He's going to hinder you in every way he can. We read today about this storm, this great big hurricane. We also read in the Old Testament about a north wind blowing. When the north wind comes, it kills everything. Amen. The north wind is not a healthy when I remember years ago, a preacher preached, Brother A.D. Spears preached in Tyler, and he preached on the north wind, and he preached about how the north wind represented troubles and trials and, 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 and hardships coming your way and all. And after it was over with, uh, a day or two later, when somebody was cleaning the church, they found one of the young people's Bibles, and they found a slip of paper laying beside it. And this young person had, had wrote on that piece of paper, I'm so tired of the north wind. Amen. If you're sitting here this morning, and the, the winds of controversy and the winds of, of uh, trials and temptations that blowing against you. I come to tell you this morning, uh, don't you never, ever, 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 ever think about giving up. Amen. Amen. Giving up is not an option this morning. Amen. Uh, giving up is never something to enter our minds. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the winds are going to blow. Amen. Hallelujah. The scripture says, and it's a promise to us, that man that is born of woman has got a lot of problems, full of problems. Amen. It says that it's promised to us, uh, but he also promised uh, that he that endureth to the end... Uh, the same shall be saved. Amen. Enduring is putting up with uh, and, and making the best you can do with it uh, and not giving up. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm not giving up. I'm not turning around. <laughs> Hallelujah. By the grace of God, I'm going to make it through one of these days. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. By the grace of God, one of these days, uh, I'm going to stand before Him uh, and I'm going to cast the crown or, or cast uh, the crown that's on my head. Uh, amen. Uh, I'm going to cast them uh, at His feet. Uh, and one of these days, because I didn't give up, uh, Brother Ford, uh, I'm going to crown Him uh, King of Kings uh, and Lord of Lords. Uh, Hallelujah. Amen. The song is saying that one of these days uh, I'll understand it better by and by. Hallelujah. There is no time in heaven. There is no time clock. Uh, there is no minutes, seconds, hours, 
dates, uh, weeks, years. Uh, there is no time span. Uh, I'll just get to stand before God uh, and say, Jesus, what about this? Uh, why did this happen to me? Uh, why this? Uh, and why that? Uh, and he's going to let me know uh, that those things that come my way uh, that I didn't understand, uh, those things that came my way uh, that buffeted me, uh, made me stronger. Amen. Made me stronger. Amen. Made me stronger. And through that, uh, I could make it in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was an old man broke, living in a tiny house, old beat up car sitting outside, and he depended on $99 a month Social Security. And he thought, Things have got to change. I can't, can't keep going like this. He had a mouth-watering fried chicken recipe. Is all he had. And he lit out in that old beat-up car to try to sell that recipe to restaurants across the land. He visited 1,000 restaurants and every one of them said no. But he persisted. And on the thousandth and ninth restaurant, he got a yes. This man was Heartland Colonel Hartland Sanders. Amen. With that, yes, he changed the way people eat fried chicken in America. And KFC was born. Can I tell you this morning, you don't never need to give up. Amen. Always believe in yourself and believe in God. God's able to change any situation. Amen. And if he doesn't choose, hallelujah, if he doesn't choose to change the situation, he's got power and strength enough uh, to put inside you to help you to stand uh, against every problem uh, that comes your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> Bible speaks of some lepers that sat outside the gate of a city that was under siege and a famine in that city. To they were selling donkey skeletons for big bucks. A cow of dove dung was selling for big bucks. Nothing to eat. People starving to death and these lepers was outside the city wall and the enemy was encamped around about this city finally one of them looked over at the other and said you know why sit we here and die can I ask you this morning why would you sit in your circumstances right now why would you sit without the Holy Ghost when there's a God in heaven uh, that said, uh, if you will, I will. Amen. There's a God in heaven uh, that says, uh, I will do exceedingly, abundantly more than you're able to ask or even think. Why, saint of God, uh, would you sit in your circumstances? Why do you sit there and die? Whenever the circumstances that make you think is living for God really worth it. I promise you 
that yet everybody here that's got the Holy Ghost, that sometimes in your spiritual walk with God, that question's entered your mind. It has mine, I'll be honest. There's been times I've thought since I was walking with God and, and things weighing in on me and problems every way I turn and, and cars breaking down and hot water heaters blowing up and, and, and this and that and that and this and that. Is it really worth it? Well, can I tell you, if you're looking for a payday in this world, no, it's not. But I'm not looking to be paid off in this world. Amen. I'm looking one of these days. I've never had a whole lot. <coughs> I've never been rich. Never. But one of these days, my payday is going to come. Amen. And I'm going to walk down streets of gold. Hallelujah. I'm going to look, get to look at walls of jasper and gates of pearl. Amen. I'm going to get to live in a mansion because he promised me. Amen. But most of all, I'm going to get to see my Jesus, uh, the one that bled and died on Calvary's rugged cross uh, and paid the price uh, for my sins. Uh, amen. Uh, and I'll do it. Uh, I'll do it if I don't give up. I'm in an army this morning. I'm a soldier. And it's been drilled into me ever since I came into church. Don't you dare give up. Amen. Don't you dare give up. Amen. Hey, sometimes uh, I got to do like Brother John said the other day. I just got to grab my bootstraps and pull myself up. But if I'll do that and not give up, I promise you God will be there. Amen. Job said, I looked for him on the right hand. I didn't find him. I looked for him on the left. He wasn't there. I couldn't find him. I couldn't find him behind me. Amen. Job never said anything about looking up. Amen. God's always there. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be that friend that took us closer than a brother. But friend of mine, we've got to make up our minds this morning. We've got to decide this is the day of salvation. We've got to decide that I'm going to keep on keeping on. I will not give up. A few days ago, in America, a man that was is a presidential candidate, <clears throat> and I'm not going to get political this morning. I hope you know how to vote. <laughs> Just make sure for president that uh, their name starts with T instead of H. And I'm not calling no names. I'm not getting political. But a few days ago, this man was shot. He fell to the floor. But Brother John, when he got up, he had that fist in the air and said, fight, fight, fight. I will not give up. God's looking for people. God's looking for people. That'll stand and say, I will not give up. Amen. I will not turn around. I will not compromise. I will not.
stop until I see heaven and make heaven my home. Hallelujah. Am I taking too long? I feel it so strong this morning. I feel it so strong. I'm a fan of Winston Churchill. I know he's a crude old man, and some things he said don't do you, you don't dare repeat. Yeah. In fact, he made the statement one time. He he was at a, a party. And he looked over at the woman that was giving him a hard time. He said, lady, you give me a hard time. But he said, you about the ugliest thing i ever seen in my life. She said, Mr. Churchill, you're drunk. He said, I may be drunk, but when I wake up sober in the morning, you're still going to be the ugliest thing I've ever seen. But Churchill made a few statements I want to read you this morning. One of the most <clears throat> remembered speeches, a little portion of it made in, in uh, October 29th, 1941. <clears throat> Part of that speech said, never give in. Never give in. Never, 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 never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. Amen. God telling you this morning, God telling us this morning, don't never give in. Don't never give up. Amen. Keep on keeping on. Hallelujah. <clears throat> he also said, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is a courage to continue that counts. No matter what comes your way, God wants you to keep on living for him. Keep on walking him. He made this statement during World War II. He said, we shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields. And in the streets, <clears throat> we shall fight in the hills, and we shall never surrender. We will never surrender. Amen. Church of Almighty God, people in this congregation this morning, I address you and ask you, please, please, Please don't ever surrender. Amen. Don't never give up. Don't never quit holding on to God. Hallelujah. Because he said, I got your hand. You're in my hand and nobody can take you out of my hand. The only one that can remove you from his hand is you yourself. Don't ever give up. He said, if you are... Going through hell. Keep on going. Amen. Can I tell you today, there's some people here in this church this morning that's going through literal hell. But I want to tell you if you keep going. Amen. The psalmist David said, Yea, though I walk through through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil, for thou art with me. If you just keep walking, if you just keep going, amen, God's going to see you through. He said, Kites rise the highest against the wind. Not with it. Any dead fish can float downstream. 
but the ones that counts, the ones that said the current ain't a bit too strong for me. Amen. There's another pool I want to get to. There's another place. Amen. And this morning, I tell you, this world not my home. Amen. I'm headed to another place. And the current may be strong. The winds may blow. But I'm bound and determined this morning. I'm going to put on my combat boots. I'm going to lift my sword and my rifle. And I'm going to say, enemy, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Hallelujah. He said also, nothing in life is so exhilarating as to be shot at without success. Amen. In other words, ain't nothing so happy as somebody shooting at you and missing. Amen. I don't tell you, the devil don't miss every shot. Amen. But just we need to just keep getting up. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't ever give up because the hardest battle is always given to the strongest fighter. You hear me? Don't ever give up because the hardest battles are always given to the strongest fighters. David said in Psalms chapter 61, Verse 2 said, From the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to that rock that is higher than I. Amen. David said, Whenever I've been anointed king and I've been on the run ever since, nothing going right. The winds are contrary to me. The storms are coming against me. He said, when my heart is so overwhelmed, I don't know up from down, I don't know left from right. He didn't say, lead me to, to some counselor. Lead me to somebody that's got all the answers. He said, lead me to that rock. I'm telling you this morning that you can take your problems to that rock. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you this morning, you can't find directions. You'll find it at the rock. Amen. 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 At, at the foot of the cross, all ground is level. Rich man, poor man, beggar, thief, black, white, Everybody equal at the foot of the cross. Micah said, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy, when I fall. He didn't say if I fall, he said when I fall. If you're here this morning, you, you fail. Every human being has the only one that's perfect. They crucified him on the cross. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy, when I fall. I shall rise. Amen. I'm going to get back up. I may get knocked down, but I'm going to keep getting back up. Amen. You ain't going to lose if you keep getting back up. Amen, because one of these days you're going to get back up uh, for the last time and God's going to say, that's it. Amen. Enter into the joys of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. The Apostle Paul said, I didn't give up. Yeah. 
He said, in Corinthians, he talked about, he said, I receive stripes above measure. In other words, some some dude beating on me got a little excited and 39 stripes is all they could put on them. 40 save one. They just supposed to lash them 39 times. He said, some dudes got a little bit excited and give me a few more than 39 stripes above measure. But I didn't give up. He said, I was in prison frequently, but I didn't give up. I was in deathly situations often, but I didn't give up. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with a rod. I didn't give up. Once was a stone, but I didn't give up. Three times I suffered shipwreck, but I didn't give up. I was in dangers often, but I didn't give up. Weariness and painfulness often, but I didn't give up. And outside of this, all the cares of the churches was on me daily. But I didn't give up. But he said, I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. That was the most important thing. I didn't give up. I didn't compromise what I believed. I didn't water down what I believed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. September 23rd, 1779. The ship Bahami Richard was captained by John Paul Jones. He rounded a point of land and come face to face or boat to boat with two English warships. These English warships done a tremendous amount of damage to John Paul Jones' ship to the place to where it was almost sink. The commander of the British two ships called out to John Paul Jones and said, Commander Jones, are you ready to surrender since your ship is sinking? John Paul Jones uttered back those words that echo through time. I have not yet begun to fight. Can I ask this congregation today, can you say the same thing? Though the devil coming against you, can you tell him this morning, I've not begun to fight. You ain't seen nothing yet, son. You ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Three more hours of vicious fighting. It was not John Paul Jones's ship that surrendered, but the two English ships surrendered to him because he wouldn't stop fighting. Can I tell you today, if you don't stop fighting, you're going to make it. If you don't ever lay your weapons down, you're going to make it. Amen. If you don't ever quit standing, you're going to make it. If you don't ever quit worshiping God, you're going to make it. Hallelujah. Can we stand? Amen. It's time to tell the enemy today.
I'm not giving up. Does anybody else feel that way this morning? Amen. I'm not giving up. Devil, I'm not giving up. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't offer me no compromise. Amen. I'm not giving up. Amen. I'm going to keep on pressing. The Apostle Paul said, I press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Lord bless you this morning. My, my. I'm not giving up. I've made up my mind. I'm going to live for God no matter what comes my way. Can I invite someone, some of you to come down? As a matter of fact, I think it would be good for the whole church to come down and say, you know what? I'm just going to make up my mind that I'm going to live for God no matter what comes my way. Let me go ahead and tell you. Our bishop issued a challenge today. He issued a challenge to the devil. He said, no, devil, whatever, whatever comes my way, I'm still going to be living for you. Let me go ahead and tell you, this week you'll probably see some things that will make you wonder, so what has he unleashed? But I'm going to tell you, as long as you make up your mind, I'm going to live for you, God, no matter what comes my way. As long as uh, you just raise your hands and worship the Lord and say, I'm going to serve you, God. Can I tell you right now, now's the time to make up your mind. Don't wait until you see the obstacles come before you. Make up your mind right now. Why don't we just enter in praise and worship?